Okay, so where we left off is somewhere about um, photon at the 1 eV, infrared, about a 1240 nanometers. Now let's do the electron. All right, so the electron, you notice it's a 1 half mv squared. You notice it's a difference in how we find the energy. Anytime we find the energy of electromagnetic radiation, we're going to use something like the hc over the wavelength or an h times the frequency because the c is the speed of light. We use this for electromagnetic radiation that is traveling the speed of light. We don't use that for particles because particles cannot go the speed of light, which is the c over there. And electromagnetic radiation does not go slower than the c, so we never use that for this because it doesn't have a rest mass. So we have two different equations for energy that we use. Um, even though electrons can have wave-like properties and electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy can have uh, particle-like properties, we have different equations for energy, though. All righty. So finding the kinetic energy, well, the en kinetic energy is uh, 1 eV. You're probably going to find it most helpful, even though they're not going to give you this example, to change this into joules first. And work in kilograms for the mass, the 9.11 times 10 negative 31st, and in, in terms of velocity. So if you change this into joules, and then you find out how fast it's actually traveling, um, what are we trying to find with? Okay, so we're actually going to go back and do the De Broglie um, wavelength if we're looking for, yeah, the De Broglie wavelength. So we're going to go back and use um, that same formula to find the De Broglie wavelength, which is this thing over here. But we're going to find the speed of of the electron, knowing the energy is 1 eV, change it to joules is what I would do and then find the momentum in kilogram meters per second, and then use the H, which is a 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th um, joule seconds, and then solve for the wavelength that way. They're going to use another way that looks, I don't know, it, it, it's something that you're not used to, and it's going to look a little confusing. It, it still works when you solve for the kinetic energy, and you do the P squared per 2m, and you solve for the P, then the 2m, and but then you have to use all those other units they showed you earlier in the numerology, which we don't use very often, and it's going to seem very confusing. So I would rec recommend using something that you're used to using. Just convert this to joules, which is times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per eV. And that's your energy in joules. You know the mass, and then that goes over for Ke. You know the mass is 9.11. Solve for the velocity. Now you know the velocity, you already know the mass. Find the momentum of it. And once you know the momentum of it, go back and solve for the wavelength and ba -dam, there you go that's going to be the wavelength of the thing which is really friggin small 1.23 nanometers which is way smaller than this by about a thousand times so that's in the x-ray uh, region um, for the same exact energy so um, you might notice that the wavelength of these electrons moving for that same energy is a lot smaller than what it is for light energy and hence, there's something called electron microscope that can see things much smaller than what light can because electron microscope for the same energy actually has a much smaller wavelength, whether you're looking at diffraction patterns or try just to image the thing because it's got a de Broglie wavelength much smaller than what that of what light would be. So you can see much smaller things with electrons than you can with actual light. Um, as as you're using that to image things and, and so forth. All right, let's keep on rolling here. So yeah, that's a big friggin' difference, all right. Yep, amen. And the other big thing is you, you're going to make this mistake, so be very careful. You don't use this for electromagnetic energy for to find the energy. You use this for actual particles with rest mass. They're different. This is for the speed of light. You never put a, re a thing with a rest mass in for that kind of energy. This thing has a actual mass, um, so you use this for things that actually have a rest mass. Okay, alrighty. So um, I don't know if I get hung up with this, but a photon A is twice the momentum as photon B. Compare their energies. So it's like twice the momentum. It has more energy. Turns out it's twice the amount of energy. If you want to do this, we got to keep on trucking here. But in, when we talk about a particle. 
well, not that a photon can't be a particle, but now that we're talking about the one half mv squared, if it has twice the the momentum, um, it's actually going to mean that it actually has four times the energy um, in reality. All right, we got a lot of stuff, other things to do. Now, um, this is not a formula you have to do, but it's still it's a pretty important thing in physics about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. It means that you can't know one thing really well, and you can't know both things very well. Like if you want to know the position really well of an electron, you can't know its momentum because the very act of trying to measure its position, know exactly where it is, you're changing its momentum and vice versa. Um, so if you're trying to get an idea of the momentum of the thing, you've changed the position of it and these are would be constants over here. So it's very hard to really nail down exactly where things are. We have a probability of where things are. But to know exactly where they are and what they're doing is kind of a tricky thing to do. So you lose some information of one when you're trying to get a better idea of the other is the moral of the story. So um, you may have heard about Eisen Heisenberg and Schrodinger some one time being pulled over by the cops. And the cop asked him, hey, uh, asked him how fast they're going. Heisenberg said, well, I really don't know how fast I was going, but I can tell you exactly where I was. That's the whole momentum position thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Police officer then finds a suspicious and searches the car, finds a dead cat in the trunk. Cop then asks, do you know you have a dead cat in the trunk? Schrodinger replies, well, I do now. Thanks. Heisenberg and Sunday principle, the consequence of the wave nature of particles. Okay, so that's kind of is a consequence of that whole thing, the electrons coming through and the probability of finding electrons here and there and there, but not so much there. Um, this is kind of the same idea. Okay, so if you know where they are in one direction, you can't really know where they are in another direction. I'm going to zoom through this pretty quickly because it's not a big thing in your AP2 test, but it but it's seen a lot in the quantum world, where if you know one um, the momentum in one area very well, you can't it in the other direction, or if you know it in one dimension, you can't know it in another dimension, and so on. So number of electrons arriving at the screen in one direction, the inner slit momentum along the x direction, and no momentum in the y direction. When it is diffracted, it acquires a momentum in the y, which can be as big as, there you go. So the uncertainty in the y is, 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 is the iffy part. So electron passes through the sit somewhere along the y direction, the uncertainty in the y is, there you are. So uncertainty is along, like with the width. Alrighty. So if we make this slit narrower, the diffraction peaks get broader. Okay? So the change in momentum y increases. So if we know the location very precisely, we lose knowledge of that momentum and vice versa. Alright, remember earlier we saw the particle's momentum and therefore wavelength is known precisely as very uncertain in the position. So to be precise, ha <laughs> okay. Of course, if we try to locate a position of a particle along the x-axis due to the change in x, we do not know its x component of the momentum better than change in p, where, there you go. And the same for z. Hey, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, or HUP, if we know the x position of a particle, we cannot know, if we know the x position, we cannot know its x momentum. At least not very well. Bam, I think that's the end of that one. Alrighty guys, and finish that in under 10 minutes, isn't that great? Alright, pausing it.